headlines. Angry students block major highway, protest abductions of course mates. Immigration declares state of emergency on passport processing. Sultan of Sokoto directs Muslims to look out for the new moon of Zulhijjah from Sunday. And on the foreign scene, Sudan's warring sides agreed to new 72-hour ceasefire. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for joining us at this hour. <music> And now the news in detail. Some angry students of the Federal University, Guso, have blocked Guso, Funtu, Azaria, and Sokoto Highway to protest against the abduction of five of its classmates and Sabongira community by suspected terrorists on Friday night. The students who came out on Saturday morning in large numbers blocked the road, making motorists stranded. The report. The protesters said they would not stop until the authorities concerned take measures to secure the freedom of the abducted students and prevent the reoccurrence of the ugly situation in the troubled host community. This is not the first time that students of Fugus will be whisked away by suspected terrorists in the Sabangira community, where some of the students are staying off campus. Until the government answers them, we all of us are traveling from Sokoto to 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 Zaria, to from Zaria to Sokoto. It took the intervention of the military who were deployed to the scene of the protest to calm down the students to allow motorists move to their destinations. The Zamfara State Police Public Relations Officer, Assistant Superintendent Yazid Abubakar said, the police have not yet received any information concerning the abduction of the students of the Federal University Gusau. He said that he would find out from the police division in charge of the troubled community. Efforts to read the management of the Federal University Gusau failed as a Dean of Student Affairs Dr. Lawal Saad and the public relations officer were indisposed for comments. The police in Ondo State have confirmed the abduction of Ibrahim Bodunde Oyinlade, the chief imam of Osho community in our local government area of the state. The 67-year-old cleric was abducted on his farm at Asholo Farm Camp on Saturday afternoon. A family member said they reported to the police when Bodunde Oyinlade did not return home by 2 p.m. and calls to his mobile phone were not answered. Olufumilayo Dunlami Omishanyo, the police spokesperson in the state, however, confirmed the incident. He said police officers and, vigilance, and vigilantes were com combing the forest in search of the chief imam. Odunlami Omishanyo said the victim's car and mobile phone were found at the farm. The DPO policemen and vigilantes are searching the area for possible rescue. Seven kidnapped students of University of Jazz who regained freedom after spending days in the captivity recount their ordeal to Adomusa. The victims were released on Thursday after paying ransom to the abductors. The report. The students outside the university campus were on Monday night abducted from their rooms around Ring Road area of just no local government area of the state. The victim said they were reading ahead of the second semester examination scheduled to hold on Tuesday last week when the kidnappers struck and abducted seven of them, including a female. We were in our room on the Monday, in the Monday, inside our room reading, and we just heard people struggling in our compound and we thought as if our, our compound guys were fighting. We never knew it was kidnappers and then immediately when the thing happened, we now, they now banged our doors and brought us out and told us to lie down on the floor. They tied our hands at our back and then most of us weren't having shirts clothes to put on. That was how they tied us together, seven of us, and then they took us out of the compound and then shot gunshots like twice. And then that was how they took us from one bush to another, from one place to another. We trekked without 
seal pass or anything. And the following day, which is Tuesday, was supposed to be the day we are going to start exams. We missed. It was really, really a bad experience. Actually, that night, we trekked more than five hours barefooted, none of us having slippers. We trekked through mountains, we trekked through bushes, marching on broken bottles, on thorns, sharp stones, anything your legs step on, broken bottles. Actually, it was really, really, you know, a bad experience. We were there in the cold, rains will fall on us because we are there in the bush, no shelter, nothing, nothing, with our hands tied behind us. And that's how we are there. The victim said the incident has affected their academic calendar. Seriously, I missed exams on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and on Thursday. On Thursday that they released us, we we came back and hi. The experience was really, really bad. We were just I personally I was thinking of so many things, my exams and everything. I couldn't just get it out of my head. Sincerely speaking, it has really really affected our academy, particularly for this semester, because we are supposed to start exams on Tuesday. So that Tuesday we missed two papers, Wednesday also, Thursday also. And even although we are released that Thursday night, but then we are all very weak. We couldn't still go to school on Friday, so we still missed papers on Friday. Actually, as it is now, out of eight courses, we have already missed five, which is definitely going to affect our results and everything very, very well. So. The students call on security agencies in the state to put more effort in providing security in the area. Adam Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Families of slain farmers in Burnley State have called on the government to tackle insecurity in their community after nine residents were killed by Boko Haram terrorists in Molai community. The incident, which occurred last Thursday, leaves the community in grief and shock over what happened. Beatrice Kurutsi has more. Mulai community where the incident happened is five kilometers away from the outskirts of Meduguri, Borno state capital. The residents are still in shock and grief over the beheaded nine farmers who went to plow their fields outside the village. One of the survivors, Ali Jidda, who narrowly escaped the onslaught, said the Boko Haram terrorist killed five of his friends when they were returning home from their farm after fetching woods. There were 20 of them armed with guns and machetes. Three of them took me to a quiet place. One of them wanted to cut my neck. I blocked it with my hand. The other heated me on my head while the third wanted to hold me still, but I dragged and ran away. I was so lucky to escape. Another survivor who witnessed the beheading of the farmers said they told him that their actions was to avenge the killing of their fighters by vigilantes and seizures of guns and motorbikes. <laughs> They spared my life because I'm an elderly man and they want me to convey a message to the military that they did this because they killed their members, burnt down their hideouts and destroyed four motorbikes and that they will continue to kill to their satisfaction. I was at home when one elderly man came and told me my son was among those killed. We went there to retrieve bodies and he was among them. We are afraid of going to the bush because of what has happened. And farming is our only source of food and income. We really want the government to intervene. The attack by the terrorists has left sorrow and fear in the community as Mulai residents 
cannot access their farmlands again unless the government provides security in the territory. Bitrus Kuruti, Trust TV News, Meduguri. Acting Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, Caroline Wuraola Adepoju, has declared a state of emergency and passport issuance to address challenges faced by Nigerians in obtaining the document. Making the announcement via a statement signed by the Public Relations Officer of the Service in Abuja, Adepoju said the declaration became necessary to emphasize the urgent need to address the challenges through a comprehensive plan of action. It called on all stakeholders to prioritize efficiency, transparency, and excellence in service delivery. The acting CGI, who visited Lagos recently, had inaugurated a state-of-the-art visa on arrival lounge at the Motala Mohammed International Airport to demonstrate her commitment to improving the overall travel experience for visitors entering Nigeria. World Desertification and Drought Day has been marked with calls for investment in equal access to land and associated assets to guarantee a prosperous future for humanity. A sensitization walk on tree planting campaign in Abuja also made case for women and girls to be at the forefront of global land restoration and drought resilience efforts. Noel Sampson reports. <laughs> The effect of desertification and drought can be the greatest threat to sustainable development, especially in developing countries, but increasingly so in developed nations too. In fact, it is estimated that by 2050, drought may affect over three quarters of the world's population, hence the commitment of the government in order to help stop desertification. We are mainly focused on the in the northern part of the country and we have so many programs to address desertification in the north and the middle bed of Nigeria because the desertification, desertification is encroaching towards the middle bed and we have set up programs to address this program or this, uh, these challenges I mean and the Great Green World for instance is one of the programs we have set up to address the, pro uh, the problem in the level uh, frontline state mostly affected by desertification. Over the years because it's an annual event for us, like we will kick start it today and we'll continue through the weeks and maybe probably months. And statistically, we've planted over 250 trees in Abuja. And you can really see the whole environment of Abuja is quite green. The government have been urged to make policies that help stop desertification by granting equal access of land to women just like men. When there are issues generally, globally, women are marginalized. Women are the worst affected, the worst impacted by issues. We have discriminatory policies against women that denies women access to own the land. So what the government can do basically is to ensure that they review all policies at, as it relates to women to ensure that women have equal access as men to own a land. Due to the inevitable loss of fighter land, Africa has spent more than $43 billion on annual food imports and farmers are losing out on profits. Because of these consequences, it is smaller farmers and households that have suffered the most. Noel Samson. Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. We'll take a look at a glimpse of Anomia marital rights. This and more after the break. Do stay with us.
TV. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. A recap of some of our top stories. We told you that angry students block major highway, protest abductions of course mates. And immigration declares state of emergency on passport processing. Moving on to other news, the Sultan of Sokoto and the President General Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sa'ad Abubakar, has directed Muslims to look out for the new moon of Zulhijjah 1444 AH from Sunday. A statement signed by Chairman Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council, Sokoto, Professor Sambo Junaidu, said Zulhijjah is the twelfth and the last month in the Islamic calendar in which Muslims perform annual pilgrimage, Hajj, and celebrate Eid al Kabir festival. It added that Muslims are requested to start looking for the new moon on Sunday and report its sighting to the nearest district or village head for onward communication to the Sultan. The statement prayed to Allah to help all Muslims in the discharge of their religious duty. To the Anyamia tribe of Delta states, like most Nigerian tribes, marriage is more than just the union of two individuals. It is a union of families and their ancestors. Jonathan Awonjaye tells us more on the traditional marriage rights of the Anyomia people. Traditional marriage among the Anyomia people of Delta State is held as a very high esteem and considered as one of the highest honor a child could possibly give to his or her parents. Every parent looks forward to a blissful, happy, and rewarding married life for their children, especially so, as marriage is a social cultural responsibility expected of every young adult and a veritable tool in laying foundation of our strong families for a stable society. In Anyoma, any lady upon readiness for marriage is expected to formally introduce her suitor to her parents. Thereafter, a date is fixed for Ikwaka, also known as introduction, which particularly provides a platform both families exchange knowledge, thoughts tend to become familiar with them or just plant the idea within them that a marriage may soon take place. People of hot drink, cola nuts and pan wine to come and inquire about the girl. The second one which is the official introduction also require just one one bottle of whiskey, one crate of drink, and of course pan wine, depending on your capacity as a man. Then the third one that involved the like larger family will not be more than ten crates of drinks. And the traditional marriage again will not be more than ten crates of drinks and food. After the Ikwaka, marriage expectation become very high. But what happens is that a list containing the necessary requirements, such as a particular sum of amount for the eguisi and diary is issued to the groom. There is, however, no fixed amount as bride price. In the process of Ibuego traditional marriage, the bride price is debated and accepted. It ranges between 50 naira and 100,000 naira, depending on families involved. A gin, which is called kai kai, then cola nuts, then you support it with some amount of money, which is called wujin or the cola nuts in my area. Then uh, they will not tell you we are not selling our daughter, but this is what we need from you as an amount you will pay. The process of a uh, bride price is simple. Where the man will ask the guy, how much do you have? I'm not selling my daughter. I am giving her to you for marriage purposes, which is, of course, to bear grandchildren for both families. Items for traditional marriage includes cola nuts, palm wine in gallons, jerry can, bottles of hot drinks, tubers of yam, cartons of assorted drinks, soft drinks and beer, tobacco snuff and cash. <laughs> Oh, 
beautiful traditional marriage rites of the Anoma people in Delta State. Now, away from Nigeria, Sudan's armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces have agreed to a new 72-hour ceasefire from Sunday after fighting intensified with deadly air attacks in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum. According to a joint statement from Riyadh and Washington, the nationwide truce, which went into effect at 6 a.m. on Sunday, will last until June 21. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia have been mediating between the warring parties for weeks and multiple ceasefire agreements failed to stop the fighting, which has only escalated across Sudan. Both the military and the RSF agreed to stop fighting and refrain from seeking military advantage during the ceasefire and also would allow the unim unimpeded movement and delivery of humanitarian assistance throughout the country. The truce comes ahead of a, plea of a pledging conference on Monday to raise funds for the growing humanitarian needs in the country. And now to sports news, South Africa and World Cup history makers Morocco had qualified ahead of a lively Group K clash in Johannesburg that drew a 50,000 crowd despite near freezing conditions. El Kajri standing in for rested Yassine Bounou allowed a Percy toe cross slip from his grasp into the net after five minutes and Zahele Lepasa added a second on 48 minutes. Hakim Ziyech halved the dis deficit on the, on the hour, but an equalizer eluded Morocco, who last December became the first African and Arab team to reach the World Cup semi-finals. After finishing fourth in Qatar, the Atlas Lions beat Brazil and drew with Peru and Cape Verde in friendly matches. The visit to Johannesburg marked a return to competitive action. Zambia also completed a joyful day for Southern Africa by hammering the Ivory Coast 3-2-0 in Ndola to secure a place in finals for the first time since 2015. Member representing the chicken constituency Garba Madami died on Saturday just four days after he and other members of the assembly were inaugurated. In a statement signed by his chief press secretary, Mohamed Shehu, the governor commiserated with his immediate family and the people of Chikung constituency, noting that the lawmaker was known for promoting peaceful coexistence and was greatly respected. The late lawmaker was a one-time chairman of Chikung local government area and former commissioner of planning and budget. He also served as political advisor to the late governor, Patrick Yakoa of Kaduna State. Meanwhile, the Kaduna State governor, Uba Sani, has expressed shock over Madami's death. Governor Sani prayed to God to grant the soul of Madami eternal rest and comfort his family, associates, friends and constituents he left behind. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. Do not forget to follow us across all of our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for watching.